I want to bring in Michael Walsh, Republican Congressman out of Florida, member of several committees dealing with national security, also former Green Beret Colonel. Sir, good to have you on. Are you buying what she was selling as you heard it last night? You know, Bill, it would be it would just be laughable if it weren't so serious. This week is the three year anniversary of the Abbey Gate bombing. Zero mention of Afghanistan, which she proudly took credit for uh, in other interviews patting herself on the back as being the last person in the room. So she says that she's going to be tough on tyrants, but tyrants have been on the march. They have been having a field day on her watch the last four years. The Taliban have taken over Afghanistan. Putin has invaded Ukraine. Hamas has invaded Israel. China is on the march. Heck, just this week, Maduro stole yet another election. So, I mean, I guess she was saying this is going to be a continuation of the last four years of Biden in terms of her her foreign policy, which is appeasement first. Can we find yet another concession, weakness on the world stage, and we see the world on fire as a result of it? Yeah. Um, She she mentioned that she had met with Putin, was it five days before the war started? Um, I... (laughs) You know, the transition for that was, hey, I got all the NATO allies together. But I think the point is, well, stop the damn war. Don't let it happen. Yeah. You know, what, what, that, that Ukraine war forced every government in the world to choose a side. I just I mean, and we're still living with it today. But, I, that tra- I want to transition to Gaza because apparently yeah, the, these, Afghanistan these was the are, original sin, though, Bill. It really was. I, yeah, I, I understand your point on that. We've talked about that in the past. So Sinwar yeah. was promoted about a week ago and apparently reportedly that he's saying, let me survive. OK, now, you know what all the leaders of Hamas have done. They, they left Gaza. They went they're, they're living big lives in Qatar. I, it's almost like it was almost a tell as soon as you heard that a week ago that he was looking to get out of Gaza alive. Is that how you saw it? Oh, absolutely. And that's because Hania is dead. And that's because oh, who was the previous political leader in Qatar uh, that the Israelis took out. So he wants to now go get out of the tunnels of Gaza Uh, after sacrificing tens of thousands of his own people to turn global opinion against Israel. That was always their strategy and plan. And the Biden-Harris administration have played right into it. Now it's time to go live the good life, sitting in five-star hotels uh, in, in Qatar, ponied up with Iran. The most laughable line of the night was that she was going to be tough on Iran when it has been billions of dollars, concession after concession, using the Russians as an intermediary with the Iranians. The Iranians are the original sin behind all of terrorism in the Middle East, backed by Chinese money. And they haven't done a damn thing. Uh, Five U.S. service members are in the hospital that were attacked just last week, and they haven't said a word. Well, I want to move back home here. Thomas Crooks, now dead. Uh, thankfully, his bullet did not land. All right. So now we know he's got encrypted messaging accounts with uh, people in Belgium, people in Germany, people in New Zealand. I don't know what you make of that. And I just want to roll this video of him at the rally along the um, the souvenir line, I guess you could say, in Butler, PA that day. You say you are not satisfied with what you're hearing from the FBI. What do you mean by that? Well, we We've had multiple FBI briefings now. The task force just had one yesterday. Uh, Of course, engagement with the Secret Service. On the one hand, it's still shocking how little we know. They still are not ready to talk uh, to Crooks' motivation. Uh, They have not been able to get into all of those encrypted accounts. Yet, in the same breath, they're very quick to say he acted alone. Uh, how did he build those IEDs and not trigger any type of alerts with a remote detonator uh, that was fully functional? How was he able uh, to uh, establish these encrypted accounts and why and what were they doing? And when you have this overlaid at the same time with ongoing Iranian plots, one of which was just intercepted last week uh, with a Pakistani national that had put a down payment on hitmen, were recruiting spotters, were recruiting protesters as a distraction. Uh, I'm just not yet convinced, and I don't see how they're coming to that conclusion so quickly, given that in the same briefings they're saying we still don't have very much information on him.
Well, more to come on that. We might get some news momentarily, so we'll, we'll just wait on that and confirm what we're hearing about the Secret Service and uh, how far they've gotten in their investigation. Sir, thank you. Michael Waltz, nice to see you, sir. Hope you enjoy the weekend. Thanks, Phil. While you got it. <laughs>